we're happy to take any questions from from anyone. Is there a motive in the um, in the slayings and the um, we've not established that yet. As, as the sheriff said, this investigation is going to continue. Um, we're, we're actually, as you can imagine, working our way back now, trying to establish a number of things. So we'll, we'll certainly be looking for that. Have you figured out any ties this guy had to Gaffney or Cherokee County? Um, at this point, we do not have any, any uh, hard evidence as to what connections he had with this community or why he targeted this community. It, it angers me as to what he did to this community. Um, I, I would like to have had the chance, and our investigators would certainly have liked to have the chance to, to interview him and to, to uh, uh, find out a little bit more. But um, you know, it doesn't disappoint me greatly, um, uh, given his condition now, given the fact that not only he, did he do here um, the, the, the harm that you all saw and covered all this time. But then he went up there and shot at a police officer up there. Um, so I'm not angry about, angry about his what current was the plight. Unique, uh, what was the unique symbol on the vehicle? Yeah. Uh, we're not going to release that right now. There is something that a witness um, informed law enforcement that leads us to believe that this is, in fact, the vehicle based on that unique characteristic. Was that his vehicle? I'm sorry. Was that his vehicle? Uh, we're trying to ascertain who actually owns that vehicle now. Well, can you talk to us about the relationship between Burris and the two people he was with this morning? No, as, as the sheriff said, we're, we're, there's a lot that still needs to be tracked down. Uh, we do want to know what happened with him during these intervening periods between the murders um, and up until this morning. So we're going to try to figure all of that out. And I, as you can imagine, that investigation as to those details is going to continue. Where is he been arrested? Where are most of his arrests? Uh, North Carolina, Florida, I believe there's a Virginia, West Virginia, uh, portion of his record, Maryland, a uh, number of states. Is there any connection between all of the victims? Like, is there a pattern there? Did you know them or did the victims know each other? We're still trying to ascertain as to what connection he might have had or why he might have targeted these individuals. Um, we've not, uh, to date, been able to connect. Uh, any connection between the victims themselves um, that might have led to them being targeted, but uh, we'll, we'll continue that investigation. Do we know if he ever lived here in Cherokee County? At this point, we do not. Is there Was there anything in the vehicle that would maybe lead us to a motive of why he went on these right the, 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 the processing of the vehicle continues. Um, we're continuing to look for uh, evidence as to what led him to target uh, this community, but as of right now, we're not prepared to, to speculate on that. The ballistics. You have the ballistics that, how the ballistics link it to the shootings here. The, the lab was able to connect the gun used in the shooting in North Carolina this morning with um, the sh all three shootings here in Gaffney uh, in Cherokee County, and so uh, we're confident that that is the same weapon. And, what uh, caliber weapon? Uh, we're not, we don't want to release that just yet. Um, as I said, there's still some details that we want to want to nail down, so we're not going to release the caliber of the weapon just was now. The weapon, did the weapon belong to him, or was it a stolen weapon? Uh, we're still trying to ascertain as to who the weapon actually may have belonged to in the past. It was been in his possession. He was using it this morning when he shot the police officer, and uh, we are able to connect it definitely to the three uh, incidents here. Just because it was the same weapon, how do you know it's the same person who pulled the trigger? Um, as I said, there's some other evidence, as the sheriff explained to you all, there's some other evidence that we're not going to talk about just yet that does put him here um, in the area of these uh, murders uh, at the time of those, those killings on those particular days. So when you add that in with the gun, with the uh, unique characteristic of the vehicle that he was using, and his his description um, from eyewitnesses, we're able to were say this is him. Were any of the witnesses brought to Gastonia to look at him, to look at his body and identify him? Um, no, no. Did he have just one weapon? Uh, we're not going to. There's there's some other issues related to um, some some property that may have been taken. Um, and right now, I'm not sure, Chief, if you all have recovered any other weapons related to the shooting up there. They're still processing the scene, yeah. so that's the right now. 
there, there, we don't have that yet. Was he, ever, was he ever identified as a suspect before tonight? No. Um, yes, can you explain um, what makes someone who labeled a serial killer? Is it basically that they kill more than one person, or is there a certain pattern? It's of just the person? repeated killing over a period of time. Um, do, you have, do you have any information about um, Mr. Burris's state of mind at the time of this incident this morning? Some of the witnesses have said he was staggering and seemed like he was lost or on drugs. I don't have any details about that. Um, I would refer that to North Carolina uh, law enforcement who are conducting an officer-involved shooting investigation. What was his relationship to the two people he was with this morning? Um, like, like we all said, a lot of this would be speculation at this point as to who he might be with or what he did during the interim in between the, the uh, murders as well as from the date of the last murder up until today, so I don't want to get into that yet. Our investigators, along with uh, North Carolina law enforcement, are going to continue to put those pieces together. Is there any evidence he assaulted any of the female victims? Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to comment on that right now. Um, there, there were hundreds of leads that came in. Um, that officers, as you all heard, there were literally hundreds of officers up here uh, tracking down leads. At, at the point that uh, this incident transpired this morning, I would just consider it very fortunate that uh, a police officer safe and, and going home, and uh, it led to us uncovering this, this murderer. Will the neighbors who called 911 get the reward money? I, I don't want to get into that yet. There's some other issues, obviously, that have to do with the reward money, and I don't want to comment on that right now. You want to do one more now? Yeah. Uh, I believe it was uh, North Carolina. North, North Carolina had a probation warrant out on him. So that's the state you can link him to most recently in his life, North Carolina? Uh, that's the state we uh, that he was shot in this morning. Let's do one more question. I think you had one prior to us going to some individual interviews. Do you have questions? One more okay. question. We, we do not have uh, belief at this point that anybody else was involved in the murders, but you know, any, anything could turn up. Our belief is right now that the, the individual who is responsible for the murders here um, was, was shot and killed this morning in North Carolina. I do want to reiterate, while some of your questions may have gone unanswered, uh, as I told you at the beginning, that uh, this investigation is certainly well underway. But the important thing tonight is to be able to get the information out to the community that law enforcement serves and assure them that the peace and tranquility of their community is back to what it once was. So that's our reason for getting this information to you as quickly as possible. Um, at this time, I would ask for a sheriff to come and, and, and close this uh, press conference time, and then afterwards we will have some time for individual interviews. Just lay, let me say that um, lo logistics, it's obvious that, that we can't do an interview. Most of the folks back here, we haven't seen our families in, in nine days and our children and our wives, and, and uh, we're all tired. That's not to say that the families are not tired, but, but, we, but, but the chief uh, police here in Gaffney and myself, uh, we'll be here all day tomorrow for interviews. I know that's that's tomorrow, but we'll we'll stay here as long as you want tomorrow. But but uh, uh, but uh, but if, if you'll just bear with us on that. Listen, we needed you. You're always calling us. You're always calling us wanting stuff. And this time we called on you, and uh, you had you you came through. And our goal in this from from uh, when this thing started, our goal when we flooded this county with police officers, our goal was to keep him for killing for one day. We didn't want him to kill for one day, and that gave us one day to catch him. And we got that day, and then the next day, our goal was to keep him for killing one more day. And the next day, and that's all we asked for and prayed for was one day to catch him, and that day was today. And we appreciate that, and, and, and maybe tomorrow we'll, we'll speak to all of you and try, try to take your phone calls and everything.